Hello, Sea Lion fans, and welcome to this latest edition of Cross Exam. Joining us today, again, we have Dr. Susan Gans, professor in the kinesiology department, and we have junior baseball player, Easton Waterman, who is also an exercise science major. Seuss, take it away. Thanks, Danny. First of all, Easton, I am so excited that I get to do this crosstalk with you. So my first question for you is, why Point Loma? Oh, man. Um, there's so many reasons um, why Point Loma. Uh, I remember um, coming on my visit um, when I was deciding on which school I was going to um, attend the next couple of years. Um, just first of all, showing up on campus um, and seeing the views and, and being someone who is um, from Northern California and, and didn't venture much down into Southern California, seeing the ocean, um, seeing um, the campus and, and where it sits. Um, that was the first thing that stuck with me. I was just mind blown um, when I yeah. stepped on campus, um, just seeing where I could potentially be spending the next couple of years of my life. Um, and then um, there were so many aspects, whether it be academically, um, how prestigious of a school it is and how, what an honor it'd be to, um, to get a degree from Point Loma, it would be. Um, uh, for me, um, there was a faith aspect um, growing up um, in the church, family attended church regularly. and. And so that was um, a big deciding factor for me and um, getting to grow in my faith and, and taking that next step um, in that journey here at Point Loma. And then again, um, probably the biggest factor would be baseball for me. I mean, baseball has been one of the biggest things in my life and, and Point Loma has had a rich history of success. And, and I wanted to go into a program that was um, going to be successful and, and going to do everything they could to develop me as a player. And, um, you know, being on my visit and talking with Coach James and the staff for the first time, um, it was very obvious to me leaving um, after that day that, that this is where I, I needed to be. Cool. Yeah, not a bad view, is it? No, not, not at all. Something <laughs> so that you're, those yeah. take. So you're a transfer. So tell me a little bit about your baseball journey to get to Point Loma. Yeah, so um, throughout high school baseball, um, Late my junior year, beginning senior year, um, started talking to a couple of schools um, here and there. Um, but there's so many decisions that, that go into picking the right school, whether you know, mm -hmm. it be academically, like I mentioned, um, financially, um, the baseball side of things, um, you know, where I'm gonna be living the next couple of years. Um, so I had some offers out of high school, um, but none that really, that stuck with me, that, that spoke to me. And, um, and so I decided to attend a junior college um, in my hometown, decided to live at home, um, save some money, um, just allow myself to grow um, both as a baseball player, um, as a person. Um, so I spent two years at home at a junior college. Um, and then late into my sophomore year, um, talking to a couple schools, still very unsure of where I was going to end up for the next couple years. Um, and then I get a call from, um, Point Loma and it was like, Hey, would you be interested in the school? And, and I hadn't, I hadn't heard of, um, Point Loma very much up until that point. Like I said, I never really ventured out of the Northern California area. So Southern California was still very new to me. Um, and then I was on a flight that weekend, came down to my visit, um, spent the day there, flew back home, um, that night, sat down with my parents and said, Hey, um, like, this is where I need to be. Um, I sat down and, and talked to them about everything I experienced and, and they knew instantly just by my reaction and, and how excited I was to tell them about what I got to experience while I was down there. They knew immediately that, that that's where I needed to be. And so I uh, called Coach James that next day and the rest is history, here I am. That's very cool. Point Loma is a pretty special place. Very special. So you talked about one of the reasons your draw to Point Loma was academics. So. What is your major and how did you decide on it? So I am an exercise science major. Um, and really I decided on that um, because growing up an athlete, I saw how much um, that kind of career path has affected me personally, um, whether it be um, nutritionists, um, whether it be uh, our athletic trainers, whether it be um, our weight, coach uh, growing up at junior college. Um, and so for me, picking this major is kind of a way that I feel that I can give back to all those um, that 
allowed me to be where I'm at today. And I think that's a, a super cool relationship that um, that career path has with athletes. You know, there's people who have helped me along my journey athletically that I'm still very close to this day. I go back mm -hmm. home um, to my athletic trainers that I had in my junior college. I, I go back home and I stop by and say hi to them. And, and they're always super interested to see how I'm doing. And, and so I think that this is just a great way for me to be able to give back um, in a way that I was given so much and also stay within the sports world, which um, is, has been my life and, and is my passion, so. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's so true, like the connections, I mean, th between athletes and students at Point Loma, I mean, I love the connections I have. And you're right, like I stay in, with, in touch with people that graduated 20 years ago. So that's very cool. So at what age did you start playing baseball and when did you get serious about it? Oh man. Um, I think so. I think the age you can start actually playing is like four or five is when you can start playing t-ball. Um, but I would, I would say I was serious about it from the get-go. Um, my my dad coached um, at the junior college I attended, um, and he um, had coached, been an assistant there, and, and coached some like high school travel baseball. Um, um, when I was at a very young age. So I grew up on the baseball field. I mean, there's pictures floating around that I've seen, um, you know, of me in a baby carrier on his back and he's got a, a fungo in his hand um, talking to his players and stuff like that. So, I mean, I, I grew up on the baseball field, um, you know, being packed around by players, um, players' parents in the stands at games when we would travel. Um, so I think from the very start, I knew that this is, is what I wanted to do. Um, and then, of course, high school came and, and competitive baseball came. Um, and then I realized that, hey, like this is like, this is this is what I want to do. And I'm going to do this um, for as long as as my body allows me to. Um, so I think it was instilled in me at a very young age that that this is kind of um, what I'm here for. And, and as I got older and um, the more I played, I just I think the more that became apparent to me. That's awesome. I would love to see some of those pictures, Easton, of you yeah, and your dad. That's so it's cool. Like pop up everywhere. It's awesome. That's awesome. So let's talk about COVID. So you transferred here, and you how many? You played a couple games, and then COVID hit. So just walk me through, like, how has that affected you as an athlete, as a student, socially, mentally? But now you're back playing baseball. So just kind of walk me through the past year. Yeah, definitely. Um, COVID last year when it hit and ended our season was. Um, was just a, a huge blow to the stomach, really, for all of us. I mean, especially us guys that are transferring in. Um, it's our first year um, at a four-year university. A lot of us, uh, a lot of guys are transferring last year were junior college guys um, who are finally excited to, to end up somewhere that was permanent. Um, we were excited. And then, yeah, we get two, three, a month into our season. And then all of a sudden we have a meeting and they're saying, hey, we're done for the year. Um, and we didn't, at that point, we didn't know if that meant we were done for the season um, or we, if it was just temporary, uh, if we were taking a break until this thing blew over, we didn't know where it was going. And then fast forward a year later and we're touching the field for the first time in, in almost a year. Um, and I think for a lot of us, that's the longest we've ever gone, you know, without mm -hmm. um, being in organized sports. I mean, a lot of us grew up playing sports in the fall in high school, spring baseball, and then summer you spent traveling, playing travel baseball. Um, so um, athletically, um, it, was, it was different. It was really hard to get adjusted to. I mean, I know at least back home, um, it was hard to even get on a field to play catch or hit because a lot of uh, the junior college I went to was closed. The high school that I attended to, they were closed. You couldn't get on campus. Um, city parks were closed. So it, it was hard. There was a point in time where like I didn't, I didn't do anything baseball related for, for months. And it was weird. Um, it um, caused me to try to like find new hobbies and things that I'm actually interested in other than baseball, which was a journey in itself. Um, and then, yeah, um, just socially and mentally and, and even academically with classes being shifted online um, so abruptly and, and doing school from, from home is, was super hard. Um, I'm a, I would consider myself a very sociable person. So I, I really looked forward to those interactions in class and, and uh, in passing, seeing friends, you know, in Kathleen and stuff like that. I mean, the, it, those were some moments that, that made my day. And, and to be in a room 
for hours on end, um, just staring at a screen was really hard. Um, and it, and mentally it was super draining. Um, and I think most people can attest to that. It was, it was, um, a transition that wasn't easily, um, wasn't, wasn't easily dealt with. Um, I think we're still dealing with it. I mean, I know we're starting to have online classes again. Um, I mean, in-person classes again, and, but some of my classes still are online and, and it's just, it's very weird. Um, it took a lot to get used to. And, and so it, it kind of turned everything that, that I've known up until this point, kind of flipped it on its head a little bit. So it's been, it's been um, hard to adjust for sure. So you're glad that some of your classes are back face to face. Definitely. Yeah. It, it's yeah. making it feel normal a little bit. I'm getting to, you know, see people interact with people other than my, my teammates or the people I live with and, um, get to see new faces each day. So it's, it's nice. It's a definitely yeah. rush of pleasure. That's, that's awesome. Thanks for being transparent about that. I know just from a professor's point of view, it's like having you guys back in the classroom, there's a certain energy we yep. get yep. instead of just lecturing to an empty classroom like I did in the fall. So right. that's awesome. Okay. Easton biggest accomplishment to date. Oh man. Um, I would say, I would say my biggest accomplishment um, would have to be the fact that I'm just able to say that I can play, I'm playing baseball um, at Point Loma and I'm going to school. I mean, you look at the amount of um, collegiate athletes compared to the, the amount of high school athletes mm -hmm. and those who um, don't have the opportunity to go on and, and play at a four year, especially one um, like Point Loma is the, the ratio is, um, it's, it's small. So it's, it's just, I think my biggest accomplishment is being able to just say that, you know, I've made it this far and, and I've been able to spend the last year and a half, two years, um, playing the game I love while also getting an amazing education. And, um, so I would say up until this point, um, just being where I'm at today and, and to say that, that I've made it this far, I think, given the circumstances, like you said, within this last year in COVID, I think, to me, that's, that's the most humbling thing for me. That's awesome. Okay, so what do you want your legacy to be at Point Loma? And what do you hope to accomplish as an athlete, personal and professionally at Point Loma or in the future too? Yeah, so um, for me, my biggest thing is um, I just wanna be someone um, that looking back um, can be respected um, mm -hmm. growing up um, in a smaller town where uh, it's kind of one of those towns where everyone kind of knows everyone kind of thing. And so your last name mean, means a lot. And, and I grew up um, in a household where, you know, respect is one of the greatest things you can earn. And, and, and at the end of the day, like, um, that's kind of what you hang your hat on. And so I think my time at Point Loma, um, I want to be known um, not just as an athlete that attended, but I want to be, be known as um, a person that, that went there and, and made um, lasting relationships um, off of the field in the classroom. Um, I want to be no, known as a student who, who worked hard and, um, uh, and went out of their way to, to make an effort to make relationships in and out of the classroom. And um, I know a lot of times athletes get kind of stuck in this bubble where, oh, you're, you're an athlete. Um, you're labeled an athlete. And, and to other people, that's kind of like all you're really known for. Um, but I think it would be really cool, um, for when my name is brought up to be, oh, he, he was more than the athlete. He was, you know, a, a friend, he was a good student. Um, and so I think for me, um, looking back, I think that's what I want to be known most for at my time at Point Loma. Awesome. What's the fun fact about Easton? Fun fact. Um, fun fact is I, I think for me that, that some people who are close to me, some guys on the baseball team, but maybe if you're real passing or just in class may not know is that I um, am, um, I think I'm myself most when I'm um, on the lake fishing or um, I grew up in a town where, you know, um, bonfires with buddies on the weekends um, were a thing, going out, um, spending time at the lake. Um, I think, moving down to San Diego has changed me and my style a little bit. I, it, there's a joke um, on our team where I have two kind of personas. There's a SoCal Easton and then there's the NorCal Easton. So some days I'll show up in my, 
my boots and jeans and, and when I'm missing home a little bit. Um, and then other days, you know, I've got my, my shades on and my flip flops and I'm a little more energetic and, and outgoing. So uh, I think I would say a fun fact about me is that uh, uh, there's definitely more than just the uh, SoCal Easton that shows up every once in a while. There's a, there's a little countryside to me as well. That's good. Favorite country artist? Favorite country artist for me right now, I'm a big Kane Brown fan. I got to see Kane Brown um, live in concert um, when he was just starting out. Um, and then within the next couple of years, he blew up. And so I would like to say that I'm proud to say that I'm one of the uh, original Kane Brown fans before he got big and popular. So Cool. All right. So you're a catcher and catchers usually have these like game day rituals. So talk me through Easton waking up. Friday morning, you're going to play APU. Tell me what you, what your day looks like. Yeah. So, um, so waking up, I, I hate feeling rushed. So I have to be at the field. So that we're usually, uh, we have a set time that we have to be there on the line stretching and I have to be there. I would say no, no more than 45 minutes early, at least 45 minutes early to an hour. Um, I'm a big, just kind of like sit down and clear my mind visual person when it comes to um, baseball and, and athletic competition. So I like to get there early and whether it just be go down into the cages or the bullpen and sit down and just stretch and be with myself. Um, uh, that's, that's really big for me is, is being with, being with myself and, and my thoughts and, and, and just getting kind of mentally prepared for the game. Um, uh, so I would say as far as uh, rituals go, I don't have too many that, that really stick with me from a um, day-to-day -day basis when it comes to game days. Um, there's no like special food I eat for a, a special breakfast. There's not a, uh, um, a special way I put on my uniform. But so I would say my, my one ritual is, is taking 10 to 15 minutes to myself and just kind of being present in the moment and, and breathing and and just kind of calming the nerves before the day starts. Awesome. Okay, we're gonna go rapid fire. So I'm just gonna ask you questions and just, just whatever pops into your head, okay? Perfect. So what is your favorite color? Blue. Favorite number? 10. Favorite food? Steak. Interesting. Favorite Home music? Steak. Home cooked steak. Home cooked, mom. Yeah. Favorite music? Country music. Favorite movie? Tough one. Uh, fluctuates. I'm a big Will Smith fan, so I'm going to have to say uh, Pursuit of Happiness is up there. That's always my go-to. Okay, yeah. very cool. Okay, Easton, it's your turn. Do you have any questions for me? Um, yeah, I just have one question. So, I mean, growing up, you always hear how fast it goes. Um, you, I feel like you hear that a lot. You know, it goes fast, enjoy it. And now that, that I'm, I'm in college and, and I look back at these last couple of years, even the last year I've been at Point Loma, it, it's flown by. I feel like I was just visiting the campus yesterday. So my, my only question is, is um, what advice do you have um, when it comes to just being present and living in the moment through these um, next couple of years um, up to graduation and in college? Um, what, what is one thing you would say that um, not to take for granted? I would say the friendships you make, whether they're with your classmates or your teammates or your um, professor, your professors. I know, like the picture you see behind me, that was 2004. Mm -hmm. I keep in touch with probably 80% of those guys still because we just had this special bond, right? And so just enjoy, like don't don't get so busy and so focal that you forget to enjoy the time you have here. Because you're right, it goes quick, but it's precious, right? And the bonds you make here, I hope you stay in touch with people for years to come. I hope you stay in touch with me for years to come, right? Easton, this was so much fun. I, I enjoy having you in class, and I enjoy that I got a chance to share you with the rest of Point Loma. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. I really enjoyed this.